My name is Alan Stone Green III. I recently lost my son from suicide at the age of 19 years old. It's been a full year of grieving for me, and as the heartbreak continues to go on, I decided to write a book. I titled it Billy Joe Green. After my son's full name, he was my everything, my one and only son. I was browsing Craigslist for someone to proofread my book, and when I came across a lot of ads in the services section for proofreaders, writers, ghostwriters, and editors, I came across this one ad that was very eye-catching, and it caught my attention. I gave the number a call. This is Richard. My name is Alan. I'm interested in your services for my book to be proofread and edited. Yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself and your book. Well, it's my first book, and it's about my son that committed suicide. I was a professional bass player for a really big band back in the 80s. After that slowed down, I got married, and my wife and I had our only son. With the money that I made in the early 80s, I invested that in the real estate market. And when my son was 13 years old, he and I started working together. We built several houses in the Malibu area. After about three years of work, we took a two year break. He went downhill from there. He just didn't seem fulfilled anymore in life. And he was always searching for the meaning of life. One year later, at the age of 19, he ended up shooting himself <laughs> in the in the head. Oh wow, I'm sorry to hear that, Alan. It's been really hard for me. I understand the father-son bond you two had, and I want to bring peace to you by proofreading and editing your book. He had such a calm and soothing voice. I was glad that I found someone that would be happy to work with me. How much are we uh, looking at for total cost? How long is your book? 450 pages. Well, Alan, I have to reassure you that I'm a former Sony executive and my work has won over six Emmy Awards. It would be a flat fee of $25,000, and on top of that, I could even get the book published with Penguin Productions. That would include 10,000 books published throughout 3,200 Barnes & Noble bookstores worldwide. Wow, that sounds amazing. I think I could do that. This is a really great deal, Alan. I usually charge around 50000 If you would like to meet later today, I'm available. I could bring my contract, and if you could get me a cashier's check, we could get things rolling. Great. I was super excited this guy seemed perfect, but the price was a little steep. Later in the afternoon, we met at a coffee shop. Richard was wearing a suit and tie. He was dressed to impress. We got acquainted with each other. We talked about my book. Everything seemed great, but he kept pushing for me to get him a cashier's check and pay him right away. I told him I preferably would rather pay him after I get the first copy of the complete book and then from there I would be happy to pay him the $25,000 in a cashier's check. But he told me, I'm sorry Alan, it doesn't work that way. If you want me, I'm going to need that $25,000 now. I said, okay. I was a little reluctant to pay such a large amount. But I wanted the book done right, and he even said it might be possible for a big Hollywood motion picture. I went to the bank and picked up a $25,000 cashier's check and brought it back to Richard at the coffee shop. When I gave the check to Richard, he said, God bless you. I will bring peace to you and your son. Our paths have crossed for a reason, Alan, and I thank God for that. And then he pulled out a cigarette pack and said, Would you like a camel? No, thank you. I don't smoke. I thought it was quite odd the way he said, Would you like a camel? Yeah, I'm addicted to these, man. I couldn't quit if I tried. 
I kind of cringed when I heard him say that. His attitude quickly changed after I handed him the check. But then we shook hands and Richard left the coffee shop. One week later, when I tried to call Richard, his phone was disconnected. I knew something wasn't right. I sent him an email and he replied back saying, Hey, I'm on page 120. I'll let you know when I finish the brook. Something definitely wasn't right. He didn't even spell book right. He spelled brook. B R O O K. If this guy's a professional editor, he should be editing his own emails. On top of that, it seemed that he rushed the email that he wrote to me. I wasn't too pleased with this guy as of right now, so I wrote him back and I said, Can you call me? He emailed me back with a reply saying, I forgot to pay for my phone bill. I'll call you later. Is this guy kidding me? He forgot to pay for his phone bill? I just paid him $25,000. Well, I guess it could be an honest mistake that he forgot to pay for his phone bill. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I called Richard one month later and still his phone was disconnected. I felt sick to my stomach so I sent him another email. He replied back three weeks later saying, Hey, I need to take a break from your book. Sorry, things come up. He did it again. Another error in his email. This time he said, Come. C-U-M. Things come up? I couldn't believe this guy. That was it for me. I had enough of this mockery bullshit of his. I replied back with an email saying, Richard, I signed your contract that this book will be finished in less than one month. Now you're saying that you can't even finish it? If that's the case, then I need my money back. He replied back two months later through his email saying, Sorry, Alan, I don't know what you're talking about. I couldn't believe this guy. Now he's denying that I ever gave him $25,000. This malevolent man took my money and vanished. One year later, still nothing. I continued emailing him every day, letting him know that my vengeance will come upon him, and if we were ever to cross paths with each other, he would be a dead man. He once replied back in that year, saying, it's quite comical, Alan, that people like you are stupid enough to hand over a $25,000 check to someone that they don't even know. I replied back, We had a deal, and you're a liar, and you will pay for your lie. I don't know when, I don't know how, but one day when I find you, you'll be sorry, because I won't want my money back anymore. I will only want you to suffer. Four years later on my son's anniversary, I drove up to his memorial site where he shot and killed himself in the mountains. I laid some flowers down. I then walked to my truck. I was parked in the parking area with a beautiful view overlooking the city. I was about to leave when a 2008 red Ferrari Spider pulled into the parking lot right beside me. I saw a man and woman in the Ferrari. They started making out. I wanted to give them their privacy so I got into my truck and I was about to leave when the guy came out of the car and hollered, Hey, do you have a light? Yeah, I threw him my lighter and he lit a cigarette. Thanks pal, would you like a camel? He said with a smile etched on his face as he pocketed my lighter. No thanks, I'm fine. I couldn't believe it. It was Richard. It was my time for revenge. I was going to get him back, but I didn't want to hurt the woman, so I waited for the right time. Roughly 30 minutes later, she got out of the car to use the bathroom as Richard continued to smoke away sitting in the driver's side seat. I put my truck in reverse and pulled out of my parking spot. It looked like I was leaving the parking lot when I parked directly behind Richard's Ferrari. I shouted out the window. Funny how we crossed paths again, Richard. Karma's a bitch. 
He looked in his rearview mirror, and in the last split second, he realized it was me. I slammed on my gas pedal and rammed him right off the edge of the mountain. The Ferrari tumbled 500 yards down the mountain, and then exploded into a million pieces. I honestly didn't want to kill Richard. I just wanted my book completed. I hate that he jerked me around as long as he did, and the longer he made me wait, the more vengeful I became. After I ran Richard off the edge of the cliff, his girlfriend came out of the bathroom. She didn't realize I rammed him down the edge of the mountain. She shouted towards me and asked, Did you see a red Ferrari drive off? Yeah, I did. Your friend Richard told me that he had a plane to catch. What? That asshole! If you want a ride, hop in. Okay, thanks. I ended up giving Richard's girlfriend a ride home to her place in Los Angeles. I didn't want to leave her stranded up there as the police and fire department would later arrive. I'm finally happy to say that Richard, a financial predator, a scammer, a thief, a con artist, is now gone forever. He was an individual that was scurrilous. And if he could prey upon a grieving father that lost his son to suicide, who knows what else this monster could have done. I once heard a saying that went something like, Karma's a bitch, don't mess with her, or else she'll come back and bite you in the ass. And when she bites, she doesn't let go. So make sure you don't mess with her.